Well, just want to reinforce the idea that I'm no expert at this. I built guitars a long time ago. Very different methods from what they use now um, in some cases. It's easier. It doesn't take much tooling up as far as getting any special guitar making equipment like you see online now. Um, and I think it works good, but you know, these methods that they have, these specialized tools are pretty nice. Um, but if someone were going to make these full time, it might be worth getting them. No, I'm not going to. Here is the guitar top. And um, there's a 160 on each one. This is number 160 when I bought them um, long ago. And um, they're book matched. Now, the grain on this, and I can see, I don't know if it'll show up on, this, on the camera. The grain on this is wider here and it gets tighter as it goes across. And it's also vertical. You have to have a, a, a vertical grain um, in order to make almost all the stuff in the guitars, otherwise it will warp. Um, and traditionally, the tighter grain goes towards the edge of the guitar and the wider grain goes towards the middle. Um, it really looks better with a tighter grain in the middle. But uh, for, for sound and uh, strength, um, that's the way it's supposed to be done. So I, I'm going to do it that way um, with this. So the, the wider grain is in here. Um, this is Sitka Spruce, by the way. And being book matched, if you fold them over like a book, and join these two wedges together, um, then you'll, you'll have the, the grain orientation going in the right, in the right way. Um, in order to do that, we have to joint these edges, get them perfectly um, parallel with each other, smooth so that they can be glued. In order to do that, I have this block of wood that I'm going to put on the edge of the bench, and I've got another block of wood here, and I've got a couple of clamps. We have an edge that we can shoot. This is a jointing plane. Another plane could be used, but this is the preferred one for this. And okay, I've taken it out of the little jig, and I've put the two halves together. And I'm looking to see if I can see any daylight between them. Looking towards the window here, get me straight. And those are perfectly tight. Now, one reason you put them together and plane them book match is because if you plane them perfectly straight and put them together, they'll be straight. But if for some reason they're off a little bit, so they're both at an angle, when you flip these over and put them together, the angles will offset each other. So I've got this set up ready to glue the top together. The edges have been joined and I've got some wax paper on here so that the uh, glue won't stick to the table. Even though this is a, a plastic malamide, I don't think it will, but I don't want any surprises. I used to uh, always use uh, just a plywood top, so I'm, I'm used to putting this on like this. Um, and we've got our butch, book match sets, so they're, they're ready to glue. And um, I've made this, this, this table, it's just a, a piece of white malamine and um, with particle board, and it's, it's raised off the top. I have a couple of uh, wood blocks screwed to it, so it gives me some, some place to clamp around the edges. Um, I have these two calls on the side, and what we're going to do is use this as an edge to glue it, and then over here I have these small wedges that I've cut out of maple, although the wood doesn't matter. I just happen to have some maple about this size, and we're going to use this to wedge the um, two top halves together. Let's take and put a little glue on the edges of the soundboard. By the way, in case uh, I hadn't mentioned it before, these are Sitka spruce. I 
found something really interesting. Uh, when I got out one of my, my guitar making books of old, I found a catalog from Gurian Guitars to um, order all of this stuff from 1976 maybe. There's no date on it, but I'm pretty sure that's about the date. I'm going to show you the prices. Okay, and some glue on this edge. It's a thin edge. And the glue that I'm using is Tight Bond 2. Um, you can use Elmer's glue, but Tight Bond has an advantage. The advantage is you can sand it. If you use Elmer's glue, the, the regular aliphatic white glue, um, it makes a shiny spot where the glue dries on top of the wood. And you have to scrape it off. You can't sand it. <laughs> It'll just sand around the wood, and it will it will come down, but it'll, the wood around it will come down much faster than the actual glue. So, this stuff though will sand, and it's good stuff. It holds wood quite well. Okay, we've got that. Now from the center, they have the wedges, and I'm going to put them on complementary like this and and let's see if I can I can show you that and I'm going to put a couple on this end in the right way here. Make sure these are nice and tight. And a couple more over here on this end. getting a little squeeze out, which is good. Okay, put a call on the top. Oh, wax paper. This one, definitely the wax paper is needed because I am going to put a piece of wood along the top here. And if there's one thing you can count on with is that it works really well. If you want to glue something together that's wood, it'll glue and it won't come apart. Now I'm just snugging those up so that I can still work the wedges. And we will leave that to do its thing. And I won't take it off till overnight. Here are a couple of books that I've had uh, all this time. This one's a little bit newer. wonder when the uh, printing of it was. 1987. So I bought this one a ways back. It was just something that I thought I'd, I'd like to have. This one is the one that is probably from the late 70s. And um, it's, a, it's a good book. This one uh, says everything you need to know and then some. It's Guitar Making Tradition and Technology by William R. Comp 
Piano and Jonathan Nadelson. Um, published by Chronicle Books of San Francisco. I think this is still available, <laughs> but there's so much information there you can actually get lost in it. Some interesting reading though. This one is much, um, I'm not going to say basic, but if you know something about making guitars, you can just use this for a guide and for dimensions and uh, so forth. So it could be pretty nice. But one thing I found inside the front cover was a catalog for, from Gurian Guitars, like I had talked about in the previous video. Um, there he is, and this is his crew. And it was interesting. I know you can't see this, but I'll I'll go over. This is um, guitar set, so the the top, the uh, backs and sides, and we have uh, the Brazilian. You get East in Indian rosewood too, but the Brazilian rosewoods, the uh, the um, most expensive thing you could buy here at the time, and these are slab cut, so they're not um, you know they're not planed or anything. They just cut, ready ready to uh, join once you you join them. Um, a set was $45. Um, that set today would be 500 or more. Um, Indian rosewood for a steel string was $26. I don't know how much that would be, but I'm sure it would be like 85 to 125. And they have the mahoganies and, and curly maples and so forth. They're all comparably, comparably priced. Um, guitar tops uh, for steel string. Let's see. See the Sitka spruce tops, like the one I'm using, they're they're top grade one. There's a grade A, grade B, and there's a Sitka spruce, which is the they call the finest quality. They don't even grade it, but it's marked A plus over there. Uh, we're twenty seven dollars. You can uh, look it up. There are a lot more than that. Next next stock, um, these things are like forty or fifty dollars. I looked online, and I was paying three to seven, depending on on the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the type of mahogany or how thick it was for that. Um, fingerboards, ebony, expensive stuff. Grade A, grade a ebony was $4.75. Um, there's all kinds of stuff here, curfing, purpling. Okay, machine, remember the other day in the last video I said I thought I paid $35, $39 for the tuning machines, and these are the showers. The chrome ones. Um, I had paid twenty-five dollars for a set of those. Um, the gold ones were thirty-three. Don't care for the for the gold because gold tends to um, wear off after a while, particularly with uh, with hand oils. Um, but the chrome doesn't do that. But the gold really looks good on the right kind of guitar. So this was their uh, their catalog, all kinds of uh, purfling and and you know everything you need to to, to make a guitar. Um, Gurian Guitars, they're, they're um, no longer in New Hampshire, they're in Seattle and they're just selling some materials, they're not making guitars anymore. So, just thought I'd show you that, that was kind of cool. I did make a guitar just like this though, I copied it, I'll see, I've got it. I'll see if I can get a hold of it. Um, if I can, I'll, uh, I'll uh, show it on a video. Um, I made it, I like this rosette and uh, I angled the herringbone and I made it pretty much like this. I didn't put a pig guard on it though. Didn't care for that. 